uh, is it more difficult these days to find love? Is it is it like is it more difficult nowadays? Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, you know, I I don't want to say yes, but I have to say yes. Um, I do think, I think the internet um, and social media has made things a little more difficult. Um, though though I don't want to blame social media altogether because I do feel like you know. We have to take responsibility as individuals, and there are things that we can be doing to either improve our ch thing. All right. Yeah, and I also believe that um, there's a lot of other factors that play into our struggles with finding love, but it definitely is harder. Social media, also a lot of a lot of toxic ideologies that are now being passed down from generations. Um, we are a generation that has come from another broken generation that has not healed. And so mm -hmm. it, it, they keep passing down the trauma, passing down the pain. And so now we're seeing, we're seeing the, the, not the fruit of it, but we're seeing the results of all that damage that isn't being addressed. So I think, yes, it, it is harder, but I want everyone to understand it is still possible. You still can have and find love and you, you have to make it about what you can be doing better in your life to get the results you're looking for. Okay, but I, I would have thought that because of social, social media should actually be aiding it and not um, hindering it. That's what so, I would have thought. Social media has made it easier for us to meet people. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it, it has caused some problems as far as finding love because now people's perceptions are being skewed by false realities mm -hmm. from online. So not everyone falls into that trap, but a lot of people are, for example, some men are having a harder time appreciating the everyday woman because they're looking at only mm -hmm. models and porn and whoever knows what else online. That is yeah. messing with their minds. There are women who may not appreciate uh, certain men and where they are because they see other women being showered with gifts and all this luxurious mm. lifestyles. And so mm. now that hurts their perception. So now people's ability or willingness to embrace each other and build relationships, I think that's what's gotten harder because of social media. But yes, I do agree. Social media has made it easier to meet people. So I think the potential of love is there. But then also... A lot of people aren't checking their DMs, so <laughs> there's so much fun in their DMs. They don't even know, so they can't find the love that social media makes it easy to find. <laughs> there are even some people that have their pages on private, I, I, and I don't know why a single person that is that is seeking to network would have their page on private. Let me tell you that that is one of my pet peeves is to see so many people keep their page on private, and I know of situations where. And I, I have to say, the women, they'll slide in the man's DMs with their page on private mm -hmm. and then expect some kind of positive result. Like, that's not going to work, <laughs> you know? So you're, you're making things harder. So I definitely, yeah, that needs to stop right away. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I literally deal with that um, every day. So I, I, I get a DM from someone saying, I, I'm looking for love, you know, I'm finding it hard to meet people. Then I quickly just go to her page and it's private. I'm like, how do you want to meet people when you are hidden, <laughs> when you are locked up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I, I just think some people have not um, understood how to manage social media. So, you know, the whole idea of social media, the key word is social. So if you're not networking, if you're not connecting, you know, what use is it? Absolutely. Okay, so 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 what should I be doing if if I'm a young adult looking for love, what should I be doing? As a young adult looking for love, I think we got to get the foundation set first. Because remember, and, and you, I'm glad you put it in your title, it's finding love and keeping love. So a lot of people have found love but could not keep it because they did not have the correct foundation in place in their life. So when we're looking ahead, we got to say, okay, how do I set myself up for success in the long run and so that starts with finding your purpose you know or finding yourself you've got to really get to that place where you're comfortable with who you are and com confident with who you are we're going to always evolve we're going to always grow and become better people but 
-hmm. you've got to have at least a good core to to yourself and love that core of you you know um as well as healing from your past which is a huge mm -hmm. one because so many people there are a lot of people who have run from love and and have sabotaged love because they were afraid of it because they didn't think they could ever find this because they weren't mentally and emotionally ready for that kind of vulnerability in their life right now and so they've pushed it away for various reasons or again sabotaged it and, and that only now sets them back all right not that they can't get it back they can if they do what's necessary but that's where the healing comes in because you don't want to be in that position where you can't embrace that love that opportunity when it does come your way as well as projecting negativity onto that relationship only to now hurt it and damage it further so we've got to make sure that we take time to heal we find ourselves as well as enjoy life i i do think that a lot of people are not enjoying life enough and they don't understand that that's that's actually hurting you from meeting or finding love in your life because mm. if you're not exuding positive energy if you're not exuding mm. peace if you're not exuding joy why would people want to be with you why, why would mm. people even want to you know have to commit to you in a relationship and pour into you when now because you have not found happiness within yourself they're responsible for your happiness and that's a very mm. heavy burden to have to carry yeah. you yeah. know if anything we're we're drawn to people who are happy who are positive who are living in their their truth that's going to make you a more desirable candidate so i think finding that happiness within you it, it doesn't mean of course we're going to have our bad days you know we're not going to always be happy 24/7 but that has to be a priority in your life you know and, and making sure that you're not just waiting to find a relationship to be happy you're trying to be as happy as you can now and and let that be a uh let that help you find what you're looking for past that mm. Mm. that that's that's amazing because i've i've always tried to let people know that uh marriage wasn't necessarily created to make you happy um now it it it's true but that's not the the foundation of it because you must come with your own happiness you know like you mentioned you can't put the burden of happiness or your happiness on somebody else that's just that's just too much you know to put on somebody and and um people tell me all the time that if i find the right person i will be happy and i tell them no you be happy then you will find the right person you exactly. know when you are happy you will attract the right kind of people i want you to talk a bit about that one, some more yeah so i mean again it it goes back to that positive energy and and and, and understanding this if you are not happy and you're waiting to find a relationship chances are that means you are operating from a broken place yes. you are more than likely going to attract another broken person all mm. right so you may find a relationship but it's going to be a very toxic one all right mm. and and you're both going to be looking to each other to make the other happy now don't get me wrong i fully believe that relationships are about two people pouring into each other's needs and desires mm. and so yes we do contribute to the to the elevated happiness of our partner all right so to me it's almost like on a scale of 1 to 10 you want to at least get to an 8 of your own happiness and then yes can a partner take you to level 10 12 20 beyond absolutely but you've got to get to a foundation of happiness within yourself first and understand that yes if you are not a happy person if you are not enjoying your life then again you become a less desirable candidate especially to the individual who has found some peace within themselves you know um again if if a woman is at peace and healed she is not going to want to entertain a broken unhappy depressed man all the time all right and if a man has found himself and he is successful and he's doing his thing he's not going to want a negative unhappy woman that always puts it on his back to make her happy You know, mm. we want to find people who we can join together with and and live an even happier life yeah. with, you know? Yeah. And so I think it's important that people understand that that you got to start working on that within yourself first. And 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 if you try hard enough, you can you can find it. I just think that people again, they've they've allowed themselves to believe that they cannot be happy without this. I cannot be happy exactly. if I don't have that. whether it be relationship whether it be 
a house, whether it be whatever thing you desire. And it's like, no, you can be happy regardless. But yes, having those things can just add to your happiness. And so changing your mindset of how you look at these things and really focusing on, you know, being in a more positive mindset more consistently, again, it, it's going to help you with a higher quality of life as well as finding a great partner. There's, there, there's actually a scripture for that. Um, you know, the Bible says something. It says that uh, to a rich man, he even hates honey. He said, but to, to a hungry man, he said, every bitter thing is sweet. So it's like what you were talking about. Once you are broken, really, you are open to anybody. You just want anybody. You know, you, you, you don't have standards. You don't have preferences. You just want anybody. So you are more likely to attract a toxic person, a broken person, you know, um, that way. So, so that's, that's, that's true. And on that thing, I want to just talk about it again that I think we help people is to understand the power of that positive outlook. You know, many people don't understand that. There are good things out there. There are good people out there, you know. But if you are so full of the negative, you are so full of negative expectations, you know, based on either your experiences or other things, it will affect who you will attract. So I'm, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, you know, there are good things out there. There are good people out there. Because there are people walking about with the mentality that there, there's, there's no good man anymore that there are no good women anymore. And I think that is wrong. Um, you, you, you don't need a lot of men. You just need one man. You don't need a lot of yeah. women. You just need one woman. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure there's one woman out there. I'm sure there's one, at least one. So I think if people understand the power of, of how this world operates, you know, the way this world operates, we don't have power to change the outward. What we have power to do is to change what's happening inside us. And that in turn, you know, determines what happens on the outside. I don't know if you can talk a bit about that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it. one, we have to understand that when we are not operating at our higher, higher self, so to speak, then we are going to entertain things that are beneath us. And I don't want to say beneath us as in to think you're better than them, but beneath you in the sense that you do not belong there. You do not belong mm. with that person. You do not belong at that job. You do not belong entertaining or involving yourself in these activities that are only pulling you further away from true joy, true peace, and true happiness. And so we, we've got to understand that it, everything starts within us. And, and we have to get to a better place within ourselves. I also think that here, here's another important part, because, you know, we're speaking to a lot of believers here. If, I would think everybody is. God does not want you to only be able to find happiness in a partner. Because then yeah. you're saying that what he gives you is not enough. Yeah, so yeah. you're saying that if it's just you and God, you can't find peace. Then what does that yeah. say to God? You see what I'm saying? And, and so what happens is when we put our happiness in a partner, now without realizing it, we put the partner above God. We are now mm -hmm. con more concerned with what this person will do, say, mm -hmm. how they will react more than what mm -hmm. God has to say in our life. We will allow the fear of losing them to control mm -hmm. us rather than the fear of losing God in our life. That is mm -hmm. not, that is a problem. And so the foundation that's also trying to be set by God in our life is to make sure that no person can pull mm -hmm. us away from him mm -hmm. and our purpose. Yeah. At yeah. the end of the day, no matter how much we love someone, we have yeah. to be able to walk away from anybody when it comes mm -hmm. to God. All right. We mm -hmm. cannot be so attached to anybody. So my thing is, yes, like, I would tell a woman, if I get, when I get married, I say when, because I know it will happen <laughs> one day. Um, I will tell her, if God tells you to ever leave me, you leave. You don't, you don't stay with me because I say stay with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. only a man. God must always come above me. Mm -hmm. and, and the same in reverse. That's the way it has to be. And I will respect that. Because I think that we lose sight of that when we get in these relationships and Again, we don't realize that that's why we end up being so emotionally controlled by our circumstances. We, mm -hmm. we, we forget that, listen, and again, it goes back to getting in tune with what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. The outside, a lot of times, is, the, is a distraction. It, it's a false reality. So what we have perceived as bad may be a setup for something amazing. All right. Yeah, yeah. What we perceive as this tragic situation may be the door that opens to some things that we could have never imagined. But 
if we only focus on what we see, what we hear, what we process, we won't understand what God's trying to show us. And so when we can get in tune with ourselves, with our spirit, which is getting in tune with God, then we can move past all the nonsense that's happening outside of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. There are some people who during the pandemic thrived beyond their, their wildest dreams, you know? And I'll even use me for a second. I remember when it first happened and I was getting word from people saying, oh, they're going to shut down the grocery stores. You're going to, we're going to be without food. It's going to be a problem. I said, you know what? I was about to run out and go stock up on some groceries. And I don't know if y'all heard over there, but there was a point where they were buying up toilet paper like crazy. Yes. So we were running yeah, out of toilet paper. And I said, you know what? Let me stop and let me pray. And I prayed. And I said, God, do I need to go do anything? He said, don't do anything. You're going to be fine. You don't need to buy nothing. I didn't. Let me tell you, they never shut down the grocery stores. There was mm. never a way for me not to get what I needed. Everything was there. And it's just a small example of how, again, you can choose to get caught up with what you're seeing or you can just mm. learn to trust God. And so to bring that back to that positive energy and that positive thinking, like you mentioned, you know, there are too many people saying there's no good men, no good women. How are you going to find a good man or a good woman if you don't believe it exists? That doesn't make mm. any sense. What's going to mm. happen is when that good man or good woman presents themselves, you're going to say, no, there's something wrong with you. I have to find something yeah. that said that validates my belief that there's no yes. good man or good woman. And so now mm. if I cannot find something, I will create something. I will mm. try to create a narrative that, that validates my perception mm. of no good men, no good women, or I will run from it. And so, so mm. many men and women have run because they're like, no, this is too good to be true. I cannot believe this is the case. How is this possible? Because you've allowed yourself to believe good men and good women do not exist. And I think it's important to understand, this is a side note. Listen, somebody could be bad to five people and then be amazing to the one after that. So we have to understand that, you know, other people's experiences with certain individuals do not define what your experience will be. And so we have to be mindful of that. Even us, we may, some of us who are good people have been perceived as bad by others because maybe we didn't give them what, what they wanted. Maybe yeah. it didn't work out the way they hoped. And so they have a story to tell that says, well, you know, here's another not a good woman or not a good man. No, we just weren't good for each other. We just want the right fit. That's it. So let's accept that. We move on, but we must understand that, yes, Good does exist. Good is out there. If you believe you are good, then why in the world would there not be a good man or good woman out there as well? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's so powerful. And uh, taking us again back to what you mentioned about, you know, putting somebody above God, that is so important because when we do that, we are setting ourselves up for disappointment because that person is not God. That person is going to have flaws. They are going to disappoint us. So it will end in resentment at the end of the day. So there are many people that have married someone and now they are regretting. They are saying, oh, I could have been this. I could have done this. I did all this for you. You know, God is the only person that if you make sacrifices for, that he will pay you back. You know, human beings don't have the capacity yeah. to pay you back, to make it worth your while. So you need to keep your eyes on God even whilst you are dealing with human beings. So don't put human beings in the place of God and don't put God, you know, in the place of man. Let everybody stay in their place and <laughs> it will turn out right. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so um, um, for, for, for the single people just watching, um, what, what physical things can I do? Because we've talked a bit about more of the internal things, um, sense of purpose, happiness, um, you know, things like that, a positive mindset. What physical things should I do if I'm trying to find love? Well, number one, you have to put yourself in position to find it. So I think that, again, depending, I mean, right now I know because of the pandemic, it's made it harder for people to go out depending on, you know, what city you're in or what country you're in. Um, but simply putting yourself out there, I think a lot of people, they, they want their future partner to fall on their, their doorstep to God to just deliver it to their door and say, here you go. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. You need to put yourself out there. But I think it's not even just putting yourself out there in the sense of looking for love. Again, live your life. Walk in your purpose. It, 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 it's, it, it's on that path that you may meet the person who is truly for you. 
but and that's another reason why you can't just be dwelling at home and negativity and and the, that won't that will not create opportunities in your life but living it to the fullest will create those opportunities i think also we for the, there are some of us who have to be mindful okay how can we build our confidence you know being mindful of creating a more confident energy and that might require for some people take it well i think for everyone take care of your health i don't think people understand the power uh, or the connection between physical health and everything else that happens in your life all right mm -hmm. what you're putting in your body how you're taking care of yourself is going to impact your mindset is going to impact your energy is going to impact your appearance all right and we can't act like our appearance does not play a huge role in our ability to meet people, find love, and, and find opportunities. So we've got to be more mindful of taking better care of ourselves. Because again, it's very hard to be of a positive mindset when you're putting toxic trash in your body. All right? And those things are affecting your hormones. They're affecting your mood. They're making you more tired. They're making you cranky whether you realize it or not. All of those things are undermining your ability to become an attractive partner. Not just attractive physically, but attractive with your energy as well, with your spirit. So we've got to be mindful of, yo, take, take better care of yourself um, and, and, and find a way that you can be more confident because confident makes everybody look better, you know? But when you're not confident, that's going to hurt you. Um, I also think just... I mean, to me, those are the main two things. Again, it, it's always about tapping into your true potential. And, and the more that you can live a higher quality of life for yourself and reach your higher potential in all areas of your life, again, the more you become a desirable candidate. So I'll, I'll add that. The other thing is to, to consider how can I be an asset in a relationship? All right? Because there's a lot of people, no disrespect to them, who want a relationship, but they're a complete liability, okay? Mm. And, and there's no reason why a good person is going to want, hell, damn near any person, is going to want to attach themselves to someone that is a liability. So you've got to ask yourself, okay, how can I be, what kind of value can I bring to the table? Um, whatever it is, whether it be as a man, you know, for many of us, I believe in being a protector and a provider. How can I become a better protector and provider? Yeah. You know? Um, and, and really ask yourself, what kind of relationship do you desire? Because, you know, if, if you are a woman who doesn't mind being a protector and a provider, which I'm not saying I, I, you should, but if that is your choice, <laughs> okay, then yes, build yourself up in the ways that you want to establish in your relationship. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and vice versa on the other qualities that we can bring to the table, so to speak. And so it's just important to understand it's always about working on ourselves, becoming better. Those are the things that I believe physically we can do if we want to find love. And, and one more thing, one more thing. Embrace that you want a relationship. I see a lot of people who deep inside they want it, but they want to mm -hmm. act like they're okay. No, I don't need one. I don't, I, I'm this, I don't need a woman, I don't need a man, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, if you're going to put that into the air, that's exactly what you're going to get back. All right? Mm -hmm. Speak your truth. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I am good as I am, but I will still love a relationship. All mm -hmm. right? I am happy. I'm enjoying my life. I'm enjoying being single but I am absolutely open to and desire a relationship in my life at some point. Speak your truth. Be real about it. Because I, I don't think people understand how, again, those words have power. And if you keep acting like you don't care, you don't want it, then you won't get it. Mm. Mm. That's, that's powerful. And um, I also want to add, uh, I want to break it down into, into two simple things. Uh, number one, add value to yourself, like you mentioned. So uh, this means, hey, if you want to join, register in a gym, then register in a gym. You're adding value to yourself. If you want to um, do a new course, learn a new skill, add value to yourself. In the course of doing that, you know, you're going to meet people that are like-minded, people that want to improve themselves also, and these are the people you're looking for. The yeah. second thing is to add value to society. So think about how you can be a blessing. 
You see, the moment you start to look beyond yourself, you are more likely to attract people into your life. Because I remember how I met my wife. Um, I just had an idea to organize a reunion for my set in high school. Let us have a reunion. It was 10 years after school. And I was like, hey, let's have a reunion. And that was it. I didn't know I was going to meet my wife there. I had gone around my city, you know, looking for a wife. But just organizing that thing that was selfless, you know, I eventually met something that changed my life. So I think if more people can stop looking at just what they want and think about how can I make this world a better place, you know, you are higher. If there's a higher chance you meet somebody interesting. There's a higher chance you put yourself out there. The reason why we're not seeing many people is that they are too self-focused. And focus yeah. on and your world, your world is too small to be the reason you are alive. Your 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 world is just too small to be the whole thing that you're doing with your life. So if more people can think about number one, add value to myself, and number two, add value to my community, to my society, to the world at large, trust me, there's a higher chance you'll connect with someone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so um what qualities should I be looking for? If I'm finding love. What qualities should I be looking for? If you're trying to find love, the qualities to look for. Um, one, communication. Um, I think that too many people get into relationships with, with individuals that they can't talk to. All right? And, both, and it's about your willingness to be, or your, your, your ability to talk to them, as well as their willingness to talk to you. Because it can't just be you only talking in the relationship. Yeah. All right? So you have to have two people who are willing to talk to each other, be open with each other, be vulnerable with each other, because without that, you're not going to have a successful relationship in the long term. All right. Mm -hmm. You may enjoy it for a little while, but it's going to blow up in your face. The second thing, this, this may sound funny to some people, but attraction. All right. And the reason why I say attraction is because one, let's, uh, we have to understand there's a difference between looks and attraction. I do not think it should be all about looks, but you need to have an attraction there because what I have found is that when people get into relationships there's, where there's no attraction, they do not treat their partner the same, all right? Mm. Because attraction is one of the foundational pieces to romantic relationship, all right? If we did not care about attraction, you could just get with your friends because there's plenty of friends you may have that you get along with, that you can talk to, but the reason why you're not with them is because there's typically not an attraction like that, a romantic attraction. And so too many people sometimes try to dis dismiss or downplay that when, without realizing how much that attraction can fuel the, the types of behaviors that we need in the relationship. And so it's not just about finding attraction, but it's also about maintaining that attraction. And you want to find somebody who is willing to work on maintaining that attraction with you. Now, again, attraction can encompass more than the physical. Um, yes, exactly. But you've got to have that. At the very least, you've got to be able to say, I am attracted to this person. All right? And now, those things that help us be attracted to each other, we have to agree to always work on them to always maintain them. We cannot let them fall to the wayside because when the attraction leaves, you know what will happen? Now you guys are less affectionate with each other. Now you guys don't talk to each other the same way anymore. The respect is not the same anymore, all right? And, and what people don't know is even from a, a very scientific standpoint, it is, it is, there was a study that was shown that people who are, when, when people find you more attractive in the workplace, you get promoted more. You get treated better. All right. It, whether we call it right or wrong, it's just the reality of life. And so again, mm. it's not. It's not about the physical look. Or must be. There must be a tra traction there. So we got communication. We got attraction. Before you go to, all right. Before you go to the I next one. Before you go to the next one, let's talk a bit more about that attraction issue because I think where a lot of people have. <laughs> <laughs> I think why a lot of people have issues is that they think attraction just has to be physical. You know, they think attraction just has to be. So I think, you know, that is where there's kind of a challenge because uh, they're just um, going through people very quickly and say, oh, you know, I don't like them physically. I don't like them physically. You know, and they're not giving the person a chance. They're not really um, trying to connect with this person just because from a distance, they just feel, no, 
I don't like a guy that um, is like this, or I don't like a girl that's like this. You know, but attraction is not just physical. You know, um, there are a lot of things that can attract you, you know, to, to someone. Okay, you're, you're breaking. Let me wait till you. Yeah. I'm okay, sorry, you... it went out. Go ahead. Would you say it again? You said attraction is not just physical. Yeah, so I was saying that, you know, so I think that is where a lot of people are stuck up because they think attraction is just physical. What they don't realize is that a lot of things can get you attracted to someone. It's not just physical. Like um, mm -hmm. in a school, in a class, in a classroom, the most brilliant people are generally more attractive. Everybody just you know, wants to relate with this guy. This guy's in the top of the class, so he generally has some attraction going. Um, in, in, in sports, um, the top guys are attractive because they are successful. You know, so I'm just trying to say that, you know, there's a whole lot to attraction than physical. You mentioned that in person, but I think that is, that is worthy of, of more mention because many people are stuck up just on the physical attraction. And I believe that a lot of what we call attraction physically were things that were programmed into our minds you know yeah. if you watch tv watch um, social media and all that the picture of beautiful is imposed on us we just feel oh you know this is what beautiful is and what we fail to realize is that beautiful will be different to different people you know like they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder so i've seen people that i will feel oh what are they doing together they don't look like they should be together but you see they're fine <laughs> Yeah, you know, we, we all have done that. In, we all have yeah. judged people like that in our hearts. So we just don't say it. But we've, all, we've always seen people be like, what are they doing together? Or, what, what, what is he seeing? Or what is she seeing in him? But you see, when it comes to attraction, because this is important because some people also don't see themselves as attractive because they don't meet the, the common mold that the society has. They just feel, I'm not tall enough. I'm not uh, I'm slim enough, you know, because this is what society paints as beautiful. So it's affecting how I feel about myself and in other words, I'm now projecting that feeling. So I don't know if we can talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so I think, and, and that's why when we, when we talked earlier about social media, and I mentioned how, like, uh, a lot of these men, their perception of women is kind of twisted now because of what they're always looking at on the internet. And so, I, I, like you said, the same thing can happen to the woman or to the man as an individual. Now how you look at yourself is, is mm -hmm. warped because of what you see online. And, you know, and I'm guilty of it myself where... I, you know, I'm very into fitness. I'm very into working out. And I have my goals and I'm working towards that. But I'll go online and I'll see these guys all in shape. And I'm like, man, well, what am I doing? I'm not there yet. Without realizing, no, no, this is not saying all of them are like this, but some of them are taking steroids. Some of them yes. are taking doctored pictures. And yet I'm comparing myself. Yes. To some of them don't have, another, they don't have any other job. That's their 24-hour job. Exactly. And, and, and that's another thing. We, we don't even know how much work the ones who are getting it the real way, they might be putting in way more work. But again, we're comparing it just based off the visual and not understanding the depth of the situation. And so, yes, I, I do think that for a lot of people, our, our attraction is, is, is getting played with. Because I've even had situations where I've seen women online where Believe it or not, they actually did not look good online, but then offline, they looked way better. better. Yeah. <laughs> okay? yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, you, had I saw your social media first, <laughs> I would have never talked to you. <laughs> yeah. so you online, there was an opportunity to, to have a better attraction. I also feel that what this is just my belief. When we're looking online, we have the opportunity to dissect people. So we can look at their picture, we can look at every little thing, and we can end up finding something that says, ah, oh, yeah, nah, I don't, I'm not attracted, or nah, I wouldn't talk to them. Whereas when we meet people in person, we don't yeah. have time to dissect the physical that deeply, yeah. all right? Mm -hmm. So there's a greater opportunity for, rather than looking for something wrong, we go to what we like first. Mm -hmm. and from there, we end up talking, and it creates an actual easier or a, a better way of finding attraction, you know? I've even had situations where some of my clients, like I've, I've had some guys who were married, and they were losing attraction to their wives. Let's say the wife gained 
the weight or whatever. And, and, and listen, in some situations, you will need to get in better shape or you will need to make some changes, right? But to get to the point of this story, uh, he was losing a little bit of attraction. But then he had went to some counseling and he realized, okay, you know what? He's been looking at a lot of porn and, and IG and all this stuff. So mm. he took three weeks off from looking at any images of women online. And mm. he said, honestly and truly, after those three weeks, he found himself more attracted to his <laughs> wife. All right. Mm -hmm. Even though she was not perfect, even though, yes, he still desired her to get in some better shape, he still was more attractive because he was not bombarding his brain with these images all the yeah. time. And so it's very important that we're mindful of what are we feeding our brain and our spirit mm -hmm. that now makes mm -hmm. it harder for us to appreciate what's going on in the real world. All right. Mm -hmm. Again, that is not an excuse for people to just let themselves go or, or to not take better care of themselves. But I do think that if, we, if we're mindful of what we're feeding ourselves, then we can appreciate the beauty that's in front of us more, all right? And we will have an easier time finding attraction. Now, also, as you said, you know, attraction being more than just the physical. Now, again, I, I, I won't tell anyone, like, if someone sees somebody and they don't, there's no physical attraction there. I'm not going to tell you to get to know them regardless. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, well, give them a chance anyway, because I don't want anyone to force things. And to me, if you force things, like I've seen women, and this happens to a lot of women, I've seen women force themselves to, to get to know a guy that they weren't attracted to. And yes, they may have liked him after getting to know him, but they still were not attracted to him. And unfortunately, Unless you can get to a point where you can genuinely say, I am now attracted to this person, moving forward in a relationship is going to be a disaster with them. All right. So you still have to wait till there's actual attraction. Now, I do think that once upon a time when we worked with people or in school, it was easier to get to know an individual, even if maybe at first they didn't look that great to you. And through time, you develop a genuine attraction. But I, I can't tell people to, like, go out there trying to find people they're not attracted to and see if they can make it work. Like, don't do that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mistake, you know? But I definitely yeah. think that, yes, be, be open to the fact that don't get stuck into a specific, like, they have to look like this, this. They have to be this tall. She has to be this size. Her booty has to be this big. Like, listen, stop with all that, you know? Just focus on... Do, are you attracted? Do you find her attractive? Do you find him attractive? Do you at least have that there? And then we can build from that. And everyone's not going to be perfect. Everyone's not going to look the exact way that we may love for someone to look, but that's not worth passing up on potential love for, you know? And, and so let me also mention this because what's most important, and, and that's one of the traits that people have to look for when trying to find love is connection. Yeah. And so to me, it's always all about connection, all right? And to me, connection will always include attraction. I've never met two people who had a connection who weren't attracted to each other, all right? Mm -hmm. Same way I've never met two people who had a connection who did not have good chemistry. And I've never met two people who weren't, well, no, yeah, I've met two people, I was gonna say, I've never met two people who had connection but weren't compatible, but that actually can happen in certain ways. But the point is that connection is the key. And so people have to just learn how to be more aware with that. And, and that kind of goes back to being in tune with your spirit. I believe those who are more in tune with their spirit will be able to embrace connection easier. All right? I believe everyone, when you come across it, you're going to know it regardless. But it can be hard to process and handle depending on, again, lack of healing and how detached you are from your spirit, all these different things play a role, but ultimately connection is the key. And, and to, to, again, the, the attraction, yes, it can go so much. It, one true attraction or the attraction that we need for a successful relationship goes much deeper than the physical. You know, the physical is, is a piece and I'm not saying dismiss that, but we've got to have, we got to be attracted to more than just how they look. Yeah. I actually believe that if if there's a really strong, deep connection, then there's a higher chance of there being an attraction. 
However, there are times you can be attracted to someone and you find out that we really don't connect on the deeper issues of life. We don't connect on a lot of things. So, you know, I just think more people should should put their focus on this connection more than just physical yeah. you know, attraction. And physical attraction is important, like we've said already. It's very important, but some people over, you know, they, they, they make it yeah. too important. And they don't, give, they don't give love a chance because of that, you know. Uh, like you said, I, my issue with that attraction issue is that sometimes what you are calling attraction is just something that was programmed into your mind. It's just mm-hmm. something that was programmed. You know, social media will just make you feel, oh, this is how a woman is supposed to look. You know, mm-hmm. and some of these people are not real or some of them, you know, don't have any a day job. You know, this is all they do. Looking pretty and looking good is all they do every day. <laughs> and you don't have that time. Maybe you have kids or something, you know. So, so uh, uh, it's important. You were, you were mentioning some other qualities. Maybe you should mention a few more. Yeah, so I mean, we mentioned uh, communication, we mentioned attraction, we mentioned connection. Um, I also believe you have to look for shared values. Um, we we mm-hmm. have to be on the same page. And so we've got to want the same things in life. I think too many times people try to mismatch and get with someone that does not share their values. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so this, this can become a real big problem at some point in the relationship. You oh. might be able to date them for a little while, and you might be able to enjoy them. You might get along great, and there might be great attraction and all these things. But if we are not on the same page, if we don't have the same values, if we're not headed in the same direction, that's going to be a problem. And, and that's why, to me, it's so important, especially for men, to find their purpose first. Because I always say, if you don't know where you're headed in life, you don't know who belongs on that path with you. All right? And so it's very difficult to understand what values you need to look for when you have not defined that within yourself yet. And so by finding your purpose and, and connecting with God more, I believe that now you get to kind of see the, the vision. Now you get to see where, where we're going with this. All right, now I know what I have to get out of a partner. Or, you know, if, if someone's going to be with me, how they need to align with me in life so that we can walk in this purpose together. And so I think that that's very important uh, trait or thing to look for when trying to find love. Wow, that, that's, that's good. The, the, the power of shared values is that even when the emotions are not where it should be, because in every relationship, the emotions won't always be at the same level all through. You know, so, you know, at times when the emotions are down, shared values, things like shared values will keep us strong and keep us together. And that's what people need to realize. So that's why there are a lot of other things that make a relationship work outside of just, you know, the, the, the emotions or the attractions, you know, involved. Okay, so let's move a bit to keeping love. So, hey, I found somebody. We're in a relationship. How do I make this last? <laughs> well, so one, we, let's make sure we, we cover the foundational things. You guys heal. Um, you know that there's communication, connection. Now, if all of that is there, how we make it last is by one, continuing to communicate. We have to create an environment within our relationships where we can talk to each other about anything and not get offended by it. My partner should be able to say to me, this is an issue without me getting all upset and make them feel like they can't talk to me about this anymore. I should be able to say to you there's something that I don't like that needs to be adjusted or addressed. So we've got to create an environment where we can be honest with each other about everything. When you do that, That means that no matter what comes up in this relationship, we can get past it. Because most people don't survive the obstacles because they don't know how to talk to each other. Plain and simple. Mm. All right. I have had clients who got divorced. And when I asked them, did you ever talk about this specific issue? No. They never talked Mm. about it. Or what people do is they don't realize that the issue may have started with, for example, Let's say they got into an argument and the guy called her out of her name, called her the B word, right? Mm -hmm. She never addresses that. She holds on to that, all right? Now, every other argument that happens, it's not really about the new argument. It's all stemming from her feeling disrespected from the what you called her that day. But because you guys have never talked about it, it starts to become all these other issues. Or... She holds on to that, and now she's not intimate with you anymore. 
Now you're mad because you're like, well, why is she not intimate? I don't understand the problem. So now you retaliate and you start having an attitude with her. And now it snowballs into all these other things when if we just talked about the main root issue from day one, we could have mm -hmm. solved this problem a long time ago. It would have never turned into all this other stuff. So to me, communication is a huge part. Um, two, we have to maintain the person they fell in love with. I am mm -hmm. a huge believer. So there are some people out there who say, you know, monogamy is not natural. And, and my argument is, no, I believe it is natural. But the problem is that we don't know how to maintain it. And we struggle with maintaining it because we don't maintain who, we, who that person fell in love with. And so this mm -hmm. encompasses how you treated them, how you talked to them, how you looked. All these things play a role. The society has made an excuse for falling off as time goes on. Now, don't get me wrong. We're all going to get older. We're all not going to look the same. There's going to be things that change. Understandable. But there's a difference between the process of and I don't even like saying aging. There's the process of growing and there's a process of letting yourself go. All right. Mm. If mm. we grow and there's changes, okay, we can grow together. But when you let yourself go, you're essentially saying to your partner, I don't respect or care about how you feel when it comes to these specific things. You know, yeah. like if I'm a man and I met this woman and I was taking care of my body and I was looking good. Now I let myself have a big old belly. I don't care anymore. And not to be vulgar, but let's just say you, you don't work as well in the bedroom anymore either. All right. Because you're not as in shape as you used to be. All of these things are now negatively impacting your partner. And if she says to you, this is a problem and you say, oh, well, we all get older. It's just the way life is. You're saying you don't care because you have the power to fix this. You see, it's, it's one thing when things happen that we cannot control and we cannot fix. You know, you get into an accident that you have no power over. I think people can understand that. But when you have the power to be better and you're choosing to not to, you are going to create resentment within your partner. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to now create other issues and destroy the relationship. So to get back to the original point, you've got to be willing to maintain what they fell in love with, what, what made them choose you to begin with, you know? And again, it's not just about the physical, it's about how you treated them. I had a couple one time when they uh, first got together, the husband would always take the, the wife out to go dance. Every week they would go dance because she loved dancing. A year into the marriage, no more dancing. Every week is an excuse, all right? So now, again, that, small, that one issue turns into her feeling like you're neglecting her desires and needs. She now becomes resentful. Now she starts to neglect you in certain ways. Now you see it starts to become this big thing when, why did you stop taking her to dancing? You are still physically capable. Your legs work. <laughs> you know, the, the car, you have a car. What is the problem? You chose yeah. you. In the beginning, and that's not okay. You know, and so I think it's important for everyone to understand, don't do what you can't maintain. You know, like if, if I'm speaking to men, I'll tell them, listen, if you cannot afford to take your woman to five-star restaurants, then don't try to impress her in the dating process with five-star restaurants, all right? Mm -hmm. If you know you like a home-cooked meal, you're not about going out, then you know what? Establish that from the beginning. Because if you... If you basically treat her to a certain lifestyle and certain treatment, and then you take that away from her, what do you think is going to happen? That's not okay. Again, if, if life hits in a way that you simply can't afford it anymore, that's different. But when you are choosing to no longer give her the things that she enjoyed from the beginning, same way as a woman, if you give him certain things from the beginning that he loved, why would you take that away and think it's not going to be a problem? We've got to maintain that treatment, maintain that communication, maintain, how, again, looking good for each other. All of those things are important if we want the relationship to thrive in the long run, all right? Um, and then, I, you know, other than that, I would also say make sure you put in God first. If you, if you want relationship to last, then God has to be a priority. But I think it's important for people to understand 
when we say put God first, it's not simply about go to church together. It's not just read the Bible together. It's not just pray together. It's about when there is conflict, before you react, pray about it. When you are questioning how you should handle a situation, you should be handling it in a way that God would want you to handle it. That's what putting God first is. It's, it's, it's leading in the relationship or behaving in the relationship in the way that God would want you both to do. Because I see so many people who they may go to church together. They may do a lot of things that on the surface is it looks like a godly relationship. Mm -hmm. But when you guys are having a disagreement, you're being disrespectful to your partner. How mm -hmm. is that of God? You know, when, when you're not happy about something, you want to retaliate and have revenge against your own partner mm -hmm. rather than finding a way to reconcile and resolve the situation. That is not of God. So if you're going to say I'm putting God first, that means, all right, I'm making sure I honor God. And, and to me, one of the best ways to look at it is I always tell people, you know, being married and being your best for your partner is not about honoring them. It's about honoring God mm -hmm. first. God mm -hmm. bless you with this relationship. So mm -hmm. if you make it about them, then anytime they do something wrong, you're going to validate you doing something wrong as well. All right. Mm -hmm. But if you make it about God first, then even when they have a bad moment, you will stay on a higher level to bring them back up there with you and to get things back on track. You will not stoop down to a lower level and meet them there and now get into a back and forth because you are trying to honor God first with your relationship. And that can be applied to even your business and anything in life. If it's really going to be about God first, then it's, it's always going to be about what does God want me to do here not how I'm feeling in the moment or what other people have to say. It's about what God has to say. Hmm. Oh, that's, uh, that, that's powerful. Do, do you believe um, a woman should um, make the first move? <laughs> When we say make the first move, do you mean like just introducing herself make the first move? <laughs> or, or, or do we mean like she needs to be the one to ask him for the number and ask him on a date? make the first move <laughs> okay answer all talk about all, right. all so i think when it comes to introducing herself i don't think there's anything wrong with that i i tell women be open because i think a lot of women hide behind and i say this respectfully but they hide behind the scripture he who finds a wife all right so anytime i've had times where if i use the word fine like if i say uh how to find the right man They'll say, well, why should a woman find anything? It's he who finds a wife. He's, he's supposed to come after me. Number yeah. one, let's understand that the word find does not mean to go search for. Find can mean to come upon something. Meaning you can be walking down the street and then you see a quarter on the floor. You found the quarter. You didn't go searching for the quarter. Right. You didn't go yeah. chasing after a quarter. You simply found it because you came upon it. All right? Yeah. So we have to understand, stop Stop twisting the scripture to now validate you not putting yourself out there. Because the reality is that many are hiding behind it because they don't want to have to put themselves out there. Many don't want to have to embrace the idea of making the first move, per se, because they don't want to face rejection, which is understandable. But the reality is that, again, I don't believe in the woman driving the situation, meaning I'm not going to tell a woman to ask for his number or to ask him on a date. But presenting yourself to someone, there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. Saying hello first, there's nothing wrong with that. Giving him a compliment, there's nothing wrong with that. Basically expressing some interest, there's nothing wrong with that. And then if he is interested in you, he will take that and now build upon that to now pursue you. So all you're doing is throwing the bait out. That's it. You're not necessarily fishing. Well, you are fishing, but you're just, <laughs> you're just throwing the bait so you can be caught. That's all that really is. Yeah. You know, and so I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, okay. Uh, when we're talking about connection, is it do I do I can I make a connection connection happen, or is it something that happens naturally? You cannot create or destroy a connection. To me, it's either there or it's not. Um, it mm -hmm. is a natural occurrence, and to me, that is because it is a spiritual occurrence. I believe it is something. It, to me, it is your spirit recognizing its match. All right. And you know, they say how things happen in the spirit before they happen in the physical. 
So I believe the spirit already knows. They already know who's that person you align with. God knows who he wants you to, who's best to be in your life, to be able to accomplish the mission and the purpose that has been set forth. And your spirit knows already. So when you meet that person, your spirit is telling you this is it. But our brain says, wait a minute, what's going on here? I'm not sure. I've never seen this before. This is weird to me. This is scary. This is overwhelming. So again, because we are not in tune with our spirit and because we have not healed, many of us have not healed, we struggle in those moments where we experience connection. For a lot of people, it can be a very scary, overwhelming experience. But yes, to answer your question again, it, it cannot be created. It's either there or it's not. Mm. Okay. Talking about keeping love, um, if someone is in a relationship and their partner cheats, should they leave or what should they do? <laughs> you, got, you hit me with a good question. Not, well, a hard <laughs> question. Not a hard <laughs> question, but it, to me, it's, it's not as simple. I, I am a believer, and this may upset some people, but I'm a believer that all cheating is not created equal. All right? And so if you say to me, my partner cheated, should I leave or should I stay? I need to understand what exactly happened. And what's more important is I need to understand how is the overall relationship. So basically, I'm a believer that cheating can either be a symptom of an already bad relationship between two people who don't belong together, or it can actually be a mistake between two people who should be together but have made a bad decision or have fallen off track, all right? And so it's important that we just don't look at the specific cheating by itself. I have to, we have to evaluate the entire relationship. Because to me, if you're coming to me and saying, my partner cheated, should I stay? And I look at your relationship and your entire relationship is toxic, then I don't yeah. care about the cheating. I care that your relationship yeah. is toxic. And to me, you should have left because it was toxic, not because now they finally cheated on you, all right? If, if, if you tell me you are with someone that you knew from the one was not for you, it does not, to me, it's, it's not to say that cheating is irrelevant. It's to say that you are, you're missing the bigger picture here, all right? But now let's flip it. Let's say you guys have had an amazing relationship. Let's say you can honestly say to me, you feel like there's a connection here, all right? Or has been a connection here. And this has been a pretty much great relationship, but something along the line happened where this person made the mistake. And I know some people may think it's not a mistake. It is possible for cheating to be a mistake, okay? And, and now, this to me is fixable, all right? We can get this back on track because we have a foundation of a healthy happy relationship we have a foundation of connection granted I, I i would hope that it does not get to that for most people but it is possible in my honest genuine opinion to fix that all right and so that's a situation where i'm going to say okay let's work on this whereas the other situation i'm like forget it i don't even let's not even try to entertain working on this you need to let them go immediately yeah so but what if uh it's a marriage and the person that cheated doesn't seem to be sorry, doesn't seem to be owning up to what happened. Okay, now that's a different issue. So now again, we, I, I cannot encourage people, don't get me wrong, I don't, want, I don't ever want to encourage divorce, but I do not feel at peace or comfortable telling people to stay with someone who's blatantly disrespecting the relationship who's blatantly saying, I don't care to fix this. I don't care to make anything better. This is just what it is. In that situation, I, I'm okay if, if I'm going to always say pray about it. Because at the end of the day, I am not the final decision maker. Yeah. And I don't think anyone should let friends and family decide for them either. I think you have to go to God. And I've seen some situations where the person went to God and the next thing that happened, they were released the person ended up divorcing them and made the decision for them, all right? And so it, it, and it was what needed to happen because now they end up being in a much better relationship. Now they remarried and they're a hundred times happier than they ever were with that other person, all right? So again, to me, it's you have to go to God on how to proceed in this situation. But I'm never going to feel comfortable saying 
whether it's marriage or relationship, when someone blatantly does not want to work on things and fix it, I can't mm. tell you to just keep staying there and deal with it. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, but I want to take just two questions from the, from the audience before we go. And for those of you that are watching, uh, please take note. We're currently training um, relationship coaches and counselors. So if you're here and you want to be a relationship coach or a marriage counselor, please go to my profile page and register. We are starting the session soon. So let's take two questions. Just two questions before we let Stefan go. Uh, uh, I don't know if... Uh, Okay, the question, the, can you see it, Stefan? I don't see any questions. It says the comments are off. Yeah, but, uh, but I'm actually putting the question up. Okay, but let me, let me check for another one. Uh, yeah, on my side, I don't know. On my side, I can't see it. I don't see any. Now I'm seeing stuff pop up. Okay. You know, but there's one I want to pick. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Can you see this? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see the comments. No, no, but there's a question. Okay, let me read it. It yeah, says, please. "What if your What if your partner says he doesn't love you anymore and wants a divorce?" <laughs> Again, you know th these situations are never easy. Um, my thing is this: you you know it, it's never good to force someone to stay where they don't want to stay. Mm. You know. And so if they're insisting on it, you, you kind of have to embrace that. But of course, pray. And, and, and what I think is important is even if you grant them their request and say, okay, if that's what you want, I'm going to respect that. Make sure that on the, during the process, you're being your best self. You're still being the best you need to be. Because sometimes, again, People feel this way because, again, people are no longer pouring into each other the way that they need to. Things have fallen off a track. And sometimes people don't say that to their partner because they don't think it'll, it'll change anything. They're like, what's the point of telling them, you know, this is my issue. They're never going to fix that. They're never going to change it. But now in you just naturally being putting your best foot forward, if your desire is for reconciliation, it will give you the best chance at it still happening. Because what people end up shooting, how they shoot themselves in the foot is, you don't want a divorce, your partner does, you get upset, so now you're acting out in ways that only make the situation worse. You're, you're not making them desire you more by having an attitude. You're not making them desire you more by lashing out. You're not making them desire you more by arguing with them. That's not going to win anyone over. So to me, the best thing to do is, all right, don't fight it, but at the same time, be your best self the whole way through. But if in the, and, and in the end, if they still go through with the divorce and divorce you, you can say that you did your part. And you can feel good about you put your best foot forward. You ended it on the right terms for yourself. And I do believe that God is going to bless those who do what he wants them to do. So you make sure you let God guide you through that process and just be committed to that and let the rest, let the chips fall where they may after that. Okay. Okay. Last question. This says, how do you deal with no communication in a distance relationship? So my, my honest answer is you don't deal with it. You end the relationship. Because, <laughs> listen, my, if, 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 communication is important in any relationship. If we're long distance, it's even more important. Like this is not a situation where we can afford not to have healthy communication. Now, of course, I never believe in just cutting someone off without addressing things. So you need to talk to them, address it, say, hey, this is my concern. I don't feel like we're talking enough, so on and so forth, and lay out specific expectations. I think with long distance relationships, sometimes we don't make it clear what we're looking for. So basically, if you expect to talk every day, you need to say that, all right? If you expect to FaceTime or a Skype or whatever, at least once a week to be happy, you need to say that. Whatever it is that you need to feel good about the communication, make it plain and clear. Because if you say to someone, 
we don't talk enough. And right now, you guys only talk once a week. Well, to them, if you guys talk twice a week now, mm -hmm. they improved. Shouldn't yeah. be a problem, you know? But the whole time, you were expecting at least five times a week. You know, so you, you got to be very clear about what's the expectation, what's the need and desire here. And then, and then unfortunately, if they're unwilling to embrace that and you guys cannot find a happy compromise, not a sacrifice, a happy compromise here, all right, then you just have to let the relationship go. Mm. But do you even think long distance relationships work at all? I think it's possible. I think, you know, if two people are willing to put in the work and the effort that it is possible, I, I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of it. I think it's, it's a lot of stress to put on a relationship. But, you know, some people have that strength to deal with it and, and it's not going to be a problem. So more power to them. You know, as, to me, as long as you're willing to put forth the required effort, then by all means. But also, I would say this. There must be a plan for when we will finally no longer be long distance. We can't yeah. just date, uh, you know, yeah. indefinitely and with no discussion of when will one of us move to the other or when will both of us move to the same place together. We have to have a plan. One year, two years, something. And if you know you can't move or go anywhere for the next five years, all right, yeah. and you guys know mm -hmm. that dealing with this for five years is too much, then guess what? Don't have the relationship. Let's 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 reconnect in five years <laughs> if we're both single. <laughs> all right, and yeah. then we can talk about making it happen. Until then, just be friends at the most, or just don't even deal with it whatsoever. So, but what are the basic things we should do if if I'm already in a long distance relationship? What are the basic things I should do to make I it mean, work? It, 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 it's it's to me, it's communication. It's it's planning to. I believe, and this is why I think if you're gonna do a long distance relationship. You need to have the means to be able to see each other every so often, all right? So, if, again, if you're two people who can't even afford right now to see each other for the next two years, you have to ask yourself, can I really be okay, happy, and at peace in a relationship where I cannot physically touch my partner for the next two years? And if you cannot deal with that, don't do it, all right? But if you do have the means to see each other, whether it be once a month, once every couple months, whatever you guys agree upon, and again, it needs to be an agreement that you both are happy with, then okay, cool. So I, it, it's all about, I, I think to me, long distance relationships need more structure. They need more definite. I, I think relationships in general need structure, to be honest with you. I think even if you are uh, in the same city or whatever, you need yeah. to make sure you have structure to where you know, have like what I call relationship checkups. Maybe once a month or once every three months, we agree to sit down on this day and talk about what we like, what we don't like, yeah. what we improve, all these different things. Because when it's built into the relationship within structure, it's easier to hold each other accountable. Yeah. It's also yeah. easier to make sure that we don't fall off. Because now that yeah. we know that we have to go to our relationship checkup, nobody wants to go to their evaluation without being on point. <laughs> it's like, if, you're, if you know your job evaluation is coming up, you start to tighten up a little bit more. So when your relationship checkup is coming up, you're going to want to make sure you can come in on good standing. So it, it, it helps keep people in check and keep people doing what they're supposed to do. But yeah, you know, with the, with the long distance, to me, structure is so important. And you just, just got to be very honest about what you need and desire to be happy in that dynamic. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, before we let you go, um, quick word of advice for guys and another word of advice for women. Just short, what would you say to the young guys watching? What would you say to young girls watching? All right, so this is what I feel in my heart and spirit I have to say. For the men, you have to find your masculine energy. All right, now everybody may not believe in that, and that's fine, but I'm a, I'm a strong believer that. It is finding and tapping into our masculine energy that we tap into our true power as men. And we start to become highly desirable men and we start to become more successful men. And we have to understand that tapping into that masculine energy is not simply about bravado and, how, and acting tough. It's about taking care of yourself because if your hormones are out of whack, your testosterone will drop. If your testosterone will drop, it will be very hard for you to be energetic, 
focused, strong, to be the things that help pour into that masculine energy that, that you need to exude to, again, be even more successful, but not just more successful, to be happier. I believe there is great peace that is found when we tap into our, our true energy, so to speak. Now, again, this may not apply to every last person, but I do believe it applies to the majority. And I do believe that, again, the, the men who, who find that energy will find more success in life in general. All right? And so I'm going to give the opposite side to the women. It is tapping into their feminine energy. I believe a lot of women have been pulled away from that. And that has caused a lot of stress. That has caused a lot of unhappiness. That has created a lack of peace within themselves. And, it, and, and please understand that we all have masculine and feminine energy within us. And we have to learn how to pull on those things or call on those things in certain moments. But we have to have that dominant energy that we carry with us most of the time. And I believe that when a woman can get back in touch with her femininity, it is true power for her. It unlocks her true potential. It gives her joy. Forget a relate Before even finding a relationship, she will find joy within herself when she can find that feminine energy and be comfortable and at peace with it. And it will start to create and open doors for her in various ways. And so again, that femininity is not simply about how you dress. It's not about just throwing some makeup on. It's about healing. It's about taking care of yourself. It's about bringing yourself to a higher level of emotional and physical health. All of those things are going to help you tap into that energy that is now going to take your life to a much higher level. I have never, and I can say this with confidence, I have never met a woman that has got in touch with her femininity and was not happier for it. All right? Mm. And I've not met a man who has tapped more into his masculine energy and was not more happier and successful with it. So to me, those things are huge takeaways for the men and women to embrace and to explore more so they can really start to walk into their truth and, and the blessings that God has for them. Oh, okay. If I'm going to also give a word of advice to the men and to the women, um, I'll tell the men watching to work on being more open. I just think men, men deprive themselves of a lot of growth, of a lot of help, because they, they struggle with being open. Um, I noticed that most coaches like you also notice that we kind of speak more to women because women are generally quick to be open to talk about their emotions or where they are relationally. But men, men uh, because we're created to kind of try to figure things out, so we struggle with learning. And that just causes us pain and that causes us to waste time. You know, we're trying to figure out things that another man would have just been able to coach us and talk us through. So if there are men here, I'll say, look, be open to discussing your emotional side. Be open to discussing your fears. Be open to be helped and, you know, coached by other men. It will just save you time that you're used to struggle and make mistakes. You know, if you could be open, the struggle you're facing as a man is not, you're not the only one facing it. Many people have faced it and have overcome it. And if you open up to other men to coach you, to help you, to work with you, it will save you time. And to the women, I'll say this, um, value yourself. Um, what women need to learn is that men don't treat all women the same. Okay. Men don't treat all women the same. Men learn from you how they can treat you. You know, if you let them get away with anything, then they will think it's okay to treat you that way. You know, and just like Stefan said, you know, a man can treat some other person bad and treat another person good. Men don't treat all women the same. They learn from you. Just so, just like the lady that asked, oh, what should I do with a, a guy that is not communicating long distance? You know, you are teaching, if you stay in that relationship, you are telling him it's okay not to communicate. So that's how it works. You know, he's doing it because he can do it. You know, that's why. So value yourself. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Stefan. This that's was... That's Amazing! This was amazing. <laughs> we should do this. Again. <laughs> we should do this again. <laughs> I don't know if you want to talk a bit about one or two of your books. I know you are working on. You just brought out a book some time ago. I don't know if you can talk about one or two of them. Um, so, well, also real quick, I also mentioned for anyone who might be interested in, in coaching, uh, I do have a membership program for for the women. Uh, they can either DM me, and I'll send you the link or go to receivingmyblessings.com to sign up for the program. Um, and it covers a lot of things like tapping into feminine energy, healing, finding your purpose, uh, being able to attract higher quality relationship-minded men. These things that I know 
have been very beneficial for the women who have joined the group already. So again, DM me and I'll send you the link or just go to receivingmyblessings.com. And then the one book I will mention is Love After Heartbreak. And I mentioned that because that one is all about healing and really finding that peace within and, and, and creating that self-love that we need and, and cr connecting to the spirit. Because to me, when we don't heal, that toxic energy is what's blocking us from being more connected to our spirit and to God. And by flushing that out of our system, we can again elevate to that higher level in our lives and open the doors to amazing things. So Love at the Heartbreak will give the exact steps that I give my clients to healing um, and getting all that bad energy out of your system. And not just healing from relationships like romantic relationships, healing from your parents, your childhood, you know, family members, because our pain and hurt, our trauma stems from a lot of different things. And we got to get all of it out of our system if we want to see greater success in our lives. So again, you can DM me for that link or go to loveafterheartbreak.com. But um, the, I'm, his line says it's quite popular. What, what's that about? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, he's lying. This is another one. Um, that one is about breaking down the scenarios that a lot of women face where there are men who, who lie or confuse and deceive in these situations. So situations like he says uh, he's separated, but he's still married. Uh, situations like he acts like your boyfriend, but he says he doesn't want a girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so there's a lot of different ones where are very common. It covers about like seven different scenarios. And, and um, just really helping women understand the core issues behind men lying, how they can increase, how they can create environments that, or how they can set themselves up to have to not deal with that as much, all right, or not deal mm -hmm. with it at all, you know? And, and, and also, again, I think helping them in a way that a lot of women have internalized the lies that they have been told. They have taken mm -hmm. it personally in a way that has now hurt their self-esteem and projected negativity onto men in relationships in general. And it's like, we have to resolve that. So that the book kind of covers that as well. And, and trusting your intuition, because I'm a huge believer and supporter of women's intuition. And I want women, because I believe that's their spirit talking to them and they need to yeah. learn how to embrace that. So the book also covers that. So it, it, may, it doesn't bash men, but it exposes the toxic nature of some men, you know, and the behaviors mm -hmm. that women need to be mindful of so they can avoid the nonsense and set themselves up for greater success. Hmm. Wow. That's, that's good, guys. Those, for those watching, please get those books and join the, the, the mentoring thing. That would be a blessing. And like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm also trying to coach, uh, train coaches and counselors. If you know um, you have a passion or a flair for relationship coaching and marriage counseling, please go to my profile page and register. We want to start training more counselors. Most of us can meet demand. I'm sure, Stefan, you, you also can meet demand yeah. of all the people that want, to, want you to help them and all that. So exactly. we need to get more coaches out there that can help people. We need to do Absolutely. that. So if that is your thing, please register. Hit me up. Thank you, Stefan. This was amazing. And we are planning your African tour already. Once COVID just eases <laughs> out, we're going to bring you down. You'll do a tour around Africa. I have, I have, I have um, people everywhere in Africa, really. So we'll just plan it for as much time as you can take out. You'll just tour Africa and uh, get to see, see the beautiful country, the beautiful continent <laughs> yeah, of Africa. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate this. And we should do this again. Right, we should so do this you, again. Are you save the video? Yes, we will. All right, save it and send it to me. Yes, we will. We'll do All that. Right. We'll Thanks, do. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Stefan. All right. <laughs> wow, guys, this was amazing. This was amazing. I hope um, it was worth it for you guys. Hope it was worth it for you guys. Um, please go follow, go love, go show some love to Stefan Speaks. This was amazing. This was amazing. Um, his materials are available on Amazon also, I believe, and on his website. Uh, my books and courses are available uh, on my website, ldmwithpk.org. ldmwithpk.org. And um, my, my books are on Amazon also, for those of you in the U.S., and other parts of the world, Canada, U.K., and all that. My books are on Amazon. You can get it. I have a lot of good books. That will be a blessing to you. Who should I marry? When am I ready? Um, a to Z of marriage, 25 wrong reasons people enter relationships, um, and 
a whole lot of other good materials that will bless you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I hope this was worth it. I hope it was worth it for you guys. Uh, we'll definitely have to bring Stefan back again. This was amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Don't forget, if you have registered for the training to be a marriage counselor or to be a relationship coach, we have a Zoom meeting tonight in 30 minutes or so. For those that missed the last one, okay? If you already attended the last one, don't if you missed the last one, we have a makeup class for you tonight in 30 minutes' time. Then after that, we'll move to other things. Say hey, thank you. Hey, see my baby, honey, let me bring you on. Honey, send a request. Tell you love this. Okay, let me not disturb you now. Let me call you later. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Yvonne, good to see you. You didn't answer if you were still in town. I didn't see your answer. I still in the country. All right, thank you, guys. See you guys in a bit. God bless you. Tell your friends to watch. If you came late, you can see watch this whole thing. We'll save it on the page. All right.